after viewing my behavior, responding to this uh, systemic or structural, at least, uh, discrimination that I've faced since I've been in the school social work. Isn't this amazing? I mean, I find that you are the victim here. You are being discriminated against. And yet, because you won't accept this discrimination, because you speak yeah. out, because you write letters, um, you are guilty of wrong thought, to use an Aurelian term. And therefore, you are mentally ill. When Tyler Henderson enrolled in the social work course at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, a while back, he was looking forward to receiving a solid education. But from the get-go, things took a disturbing turn, given that associate professor Jenny Vengris allegedly told Tyler in a private meeting that she wasn't comfortable hearing Tyler speak in class. Now, why would she say that? Well, incredibly, it's because of Tyler's race and sex. What? And joining me now from Hamilton is Tyler Henderson. Tyler, thank you so much for making time uh, for me today. How you doing? Not too bad. Thanks for having me. You got it. So tell me, Tyler, your professor had an issue with you because you are a white male. Why would that be? So uh, at the start of the semester, they, they did the uh, uh, preamble regarding safe space. And after the class, I, I stayed back behind uh, to talk to the professor about it. And uh, that's when she said that um, she, was, she didn't want white men to participate in her class. Um, she went on to describe to me as to why it was because of it being a safe space for other people and um, how if someone like me shares that it would no longer be a safe space. Uh, Tyler, I, I'm really confused with her terminology here, a safe space. So because you are white and male, suddenly the space in her classroom, it's like, I don't know, there's a downed power wire that they face electrocution. I mean, what what does this gibberish mean that uh, because of your race and your sex, that um, this is an unsafe space? Uh, I mean, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I w it was disclosed to me that um, because some of the other attendees, some of my peers, um, being minorities, um, had bad experiences with people that looked like me. Um, so as a result, uh, people who look like me, who share, um, could make them feel uncomfortable and make them feel less inclined to also participate equally. You know, I, I just find this staggering because this is really an example of what the left campaigned against in yesterday's decade. I'm talking about if you look at South Africa, you know, the apartheid system that was there until it fell in the early 90s. Uh, South Africa was treated as a pariah the world over. It was excluded from the Olympic Games. There was boycott and divestment uh, movements, and rightfully so. It was a racist society. And now we've gone so far the other way that it is considered acceptable to exclude somebody based on race and, in your case, uh, gender as well. Um, how do you make sense of this, Tyler? Yeah, so I've been spending the last uh, two or year and a half um, trying to figure out uh, how to make sense out of it and how to move forward with my education. Um you know, I've taken it upon myself to uh, file grievances in the appropriate places where I was told to, and uh, everything's just kind of gotten worse down a down a hill that uh, I don't really know how to recover from now. Um, Smollett staged a racist and homophobic attack on himself back in January of 2019 when he told investigators he was walking home from this subway shop and two men attacked him, yelling racial and homophobic slurs and putting a noose around his neck. Authorities began questioning Smollett's story when he declined to fully cooperate with the investigation. The prosecution's star witnesses, the Elsindaro brothers, who testified Smollett, hired them to carry out the attack. And, and let's talk about that. We spoke off camera. You went to the equity and inclusions office at McMaster 
and you told them your story and they told you you had a pretty solid case in terms of discrimination, but they were talking you out of proceeding with a complaint and investigation because you would be, quote, socially crucified, end quote. What did they mean by that, Tyler? So the way I understand it now in retrospect is, you know, you have workers that, you know, agents that, you know, represent McMaster in the best interest of McMaster um, who represent um, the legal voice that is supposed to be there to support students, although none of them um, are qualified as lawyers. Um, so they, I see it as a form of coercion to uh, silence students out of the best interest of the university, um, although that would you know, infringe upon the Ontario Law Society's, um, you know, mandates of, of any legal counsel um, to represent the opposite side. But that's the only sense I can make out of it. You know, it, it's astonishing because if they're about equity and inclusion, uh, yeah. I don't see that being the case here because basically the subtext here, Tyler, I think, is that you don't fit the profile of a typical victim, if you will. Uh, you're a white male, and therefore um, they're just not interested, uh, which is despicable because I think, just like any legitimate court in the land, they should look at each case on its merits on a case-by-case -case basis. The Times announced it was hiring a woman called Sarah Jong to write about technology for the paper. Within hours, readers discovered Jong's Twitter feed, which she had not bothered to delete, apparently because she was not embarrassed by it. Judging by what she wrote on Twitter, Sarah Jong is an angry bigot, and not in a subtle way. Here are some examples of her tweets. Quote, oh man, it's kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. Another, quote, dumbass effing white people marking up the internet with their opinions like dogs peeing on fire hydrants. Another, quote, hashtag cancel white people. At one point, Zhang tweeted a crude graph claiming that as whiteness increased, so did awful. You also wanted to uh, go out to the local media. That would be the newspaper, the Hamilton Spectator. And uh, to me, this is one hell of a story about uh, um, a university in 2022 Canada basically saying, yeah, we're going to discriminate against you based on uh, race and sex. But the Hamilton Spectator, uh, they didn't seem to see a story here either, did they? No, no, they didn't. So I, I spoke to an assistant of uh, one of the journalists there who was recommended to me. And they said they would get back to me if they, you know, thought that there was a story worth covering. Um, I went over as much details as I could based on the time limits that they gave me to provide that information. And they never got back to me. So uh, it was very apparent that uh, the media here didn't want to cover the story. Well, I think one of the reasons they might not have wanted to cover the story, Tyler, and forgive me for being such a cynic, is they probably weigh in on the university's, uh, you know, side that yeah. uh, this kind of uh, selective racism and sexism and uh, new and improved apartheid, they don't have a problem with that. And shame on them, uh, especially given that they are increasingly a taxpayer um, subsidized entity. Now, the thing is, uh, this goes on and you're having all kinds of meetings and back and forth. And right now, uh, you are not in class. And when you told me the reason why, um, I, I, I was, let's put it this way, I was very glad I was in a seated position. Why are you not in class right now, Tyler? So uh, constantly trying to you know, battle through this political atmosphere uh, full of prejudice and hatred, um, via both my peers and many of the teaching faculty, um, you know, I uh, started, you know, getting upset with people and um, a lot of my behavior was understood as mental health problems, um, <laughs> despite me filing my grievances in the appropriate ways, the way I was supposed to, and those grievances being silenced, uh, my behavior that's responding to this type of prejudice is being understood as mental health problems. And the McMaster policy um, allows the dean of students to 
involuntarily remove students from the um, student body under the suspicion or speculation of mental health problems, which brings us to a second or third uh, human rights violation, which is discrimination based on mental health, which they have zero evidence to support. It's all based on speculation um, uh, after viewing my behavior or responding to this uh, systemic or structural, at least, uh, discrimination that I've faced since I've been in school social work. Isn't this amazing? I mean, I find that you are the victim here. You are being discriminated against. And yet, because you won't accept this discrimination because you speak yeah. out, because you write letters. Um, you are guilty of wrong thought, to use an Orwellian term, and therefore you are mentally ill. You know, uh, yeah. Tyler, I have no uh, dog in this race, but uh, this kind of a story, it boils my blood. Have you thought of, uh, I don't know what your financial situation is, but have you thought about seeking real legal counsel, not this kangaroo court, the equity and inclusions office, but getting a lawyer and going after uh, these uh, people at McMaster who are clearly guilty, if this story is indeed true and have no reason not to believe you, of discrimination? So right now, I, I do not have the, the financial resources to pursue uh, legal action um, through civil court, but uh, I'm currently representing myself at the McMaster level of court, which is sanctioned by the Ontario government. And only upon um, final decision of that level of court am I able to then appeal it to the provincial level, which if we get there, or hopefully when we get there, um, I will also not be able to afford legal representation. Um, but I'm, I'm trying my best here with what I have and uh, um, just trying to stay hopeful. Tyler, this is a despicable story. And uh, just so that the folks know, we did indeed reach out to uh, your professor that allegedly made that quote, um, as well as the president of McMaster, that would be David Farrar, as well the media relations team at McMaster to date, radio silence. And uh, well, I guess that seems to be the policy. This wouldn't be an issue uh, if you took the professor's words of advice, which yeah. is kind of like what the wrestler, The Rock, used to say, know your role and shut your mouth. And your role as a white male in this professor's eyes means that you have to remain silent because otherwise an unsafe space is created. Uh, this is lunacy. Tyler, last word goes to you, my friend. I mean, I just I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, to speak here and um, I'm looking for any uh, resources or for uh, financial support I can I can use to hold these people accountable um, uh, in the future. I what I hope for is a you know learning environment that is uh, inclusive to everyone, despite of sex and race. Uh, I'm, I'm in the school of social work to make this happen. And it, the irony here is it's just so baffling that um, you know, it's hard to hold on to that hope, but I still have it. Well, you know, good for you, Tyler. And, you know, I go through McMaster's website and the way they use inclusion and <laughs> diversity yeah. over and over and over again, which is all uh, fine and jolly, except it seems that if you're not the right type of person, then they embrace exclusion and they're not yeah. interested in certain types of diversity. It's hypocritical. I think it's downright yeah. criminal, uh, if you ask me. Tyler, uh, please stay in touch in the weeks and months ahead. If anything changes on your case, I would love to do an update. Thank you so much for joining me Thank here, you. Tyler. From McMaster, there was an email sent to me by Michelle Donovan. She's with the communications team there. So I'm going to now read you uh, Michelle Donovan's statement uh, regarding the Tyler Henderson case. And she writes, quote, Thank you for your email. Here is a statement on behalf of the university. McMaster has a comprehensive discrimination and harassment policy which prohibits discrimination and or harassment on all grounds in the Ontario Human Rights Code. The policy applies equally to all members of the university community. No complaint under McMaster's discrimination and harassment policy 
has been filed by this former student, but the option to do so in this case was never limited. The policy can be found here, discrimination and harassment policy, McMaster.ca. It clearly states that all members of the university community have a right to study, work, and live in an environment that is free of discrimination and harassment. There is currently a case involving this former student being heard through the student appeal procedure. Tyler has provided no evidence that substantiates his claims. Take care, Michelle." End quote. So there you have it, folks. That is the university statement. It's quite contrary to what Tyler Henderson told us. In the days and weeks ahead, we'll keep our eye on this story. And when there's more information to report, we will do a follow-up. Hey folks, before you know it, summer is going to be here. So get ready to have fun in the sun by wearing some of the newest Rebel News merchandise. We've got new t-shirts, sweatshirts, caps, you name it. Wear your politics on your sleeve when it comes to supporting Rebel News and looking quite fashionably as you do so. Please go to rebelnewsstore.com. That's rebelnewsstore.com and place your order today.